look at the program up till yesterday, you would probably have thought that I would be talking about a completely different topic related to how we might be able to integrate some things with the BioCreative BCom uh, contest. Unfortunately, there were some changes in the rules which meant that my proposal for what we should be doing here actually now is explicitly not allowed to do that in the contest. So if you want to hear more about that, I'll be available for a rant the entire week. Instead, what I'll talk about here is something I also talked about in Munich at the bar there, um, which is text mining based retrieval of protein networks. But uh, first, since it's a hackathon and we'll hopefully be working together, I thought I'll give you a little bit of introduction to me, who am I and what do I work on. So I'm Danish and coincidentally I again now work in Denmark. I'm running a lab at the Novo Nordisk Foundation Center for Protein Research where I'm working on a bunch of different topics. I'll get to that in a moment. I'm also a co-founder of a company called Intomics, doing contract research consulting and bioinformatics. It's about 15 people now. So what we are doing in my group is mainly working on proteomics data, working on protein networks. We are one of the groups involved in the quite well-known string database, which is a database used by more than 10,000 people every single week. So. It's a database where we pull together a lot of different data, including from text mining and large-scale data, to produce protein interaction networks so that you can very easily go in, type in your favorite protein of interest like Merlin and pull out a network for it. The other thing I work a lot on is together with Sarah Brunak, who's heading another group at CPR, which is medical data. So we're working with the kind of data that exists in the medical registries, in particular, of course, the Danish registries. So as you might know, there's a lot of data being collected about you in electronic form whenever you go to a hospital, including medication data, diagnosis and structured form, radiology images, what have you. But on top of that, of course, you also have all the clinical narrative, which is just human readable text, in this case, of course, written in Danish, that we can do text mining on. And of course, text mining is the main reason why I'm here. That's my big interest in blah. So what I'll talk about is a topic that might sound like a bit of a misnomer first, which is named entity retrieval. I, you might think I meant named entity recognition, but I don't. So the idea is, suppose you have some topic of interest. And for that topic of interest, you would want to produce, for example, a protein interaction network or something else. Then the first thing you can do with that topic of interest is to try to express it as a PubMed query. And once you have your PubMed query, you can, of course, abstract this, any PubMed query. You can abstract that to be a set of abstracts, which is, of course, the set of abstracts that actually match your query. So now you have a set of, abst of abstracts, or rather two sets of abstracts, the ones that match and the rest of PubMed. And you can run named entity recognition of, on that for whatever kind of entities you're interested in. It could be proteins. It could be something else. And now you, of course, have a foreground count which means for every single, single entity, you know how many times they were mentioned in the abstracts that talk about your topic of interest. And you have a background count, which is the entire PubMed. So you have entire PubMed, you count in that, you get a background count for every protein. And you can combine that into some sort of enrichment score where you calculate for, for example, every single human protein, how much more is that mentioned in the abstracts that match my PubMed query compared to other abstracts in PubMed. And then you can put some cutoff on that score, and you basically reduce your problem to having a set of entities. Now, the next thing you want to do is network construction. And if what you were looking at was proteins, then we want to build a protein network. And if you want to build a protein network, there's a couple of ways you could do that. Maybe the first thing that comes to mind to people in this room is to do text mining. So once again, you might take all of PubMed or you might take full text articles like PubMed Central. And you would run text mining on that to try to automatically extract interactions. You could, of course, also do manual curation, going through abstracts and pulling out facts like that. It's the kind of work, for example, done by the Uniprod curators. But you could also do large-scale data integration, which I work a lot on. So pulling together high throughput physical protein interaction screens, or you could do computational predictions, you could transfer information by ethology across organisms. You can do a lot of things. And that's what we do in the string database. 
So what we want to do, and what I have been doing together with a bunch of people, is try to tie these approaches together. So we'd like to be able to very easily come in with a topic of interest and then go, let's find the proteins related to my topic of interest. Let's run off to the string database and pull out an interaction network of how these proteins might be working together and present that to you in a way where you can work with it. And the solution to that is a Cytoscape app. And since I am a combination of reckless, stupid and uh, hopelessly positive about my own software, I have not prepared slides about that, but will be doing a live software demo instead. So before I jump into Cytoscape, just acknowledgements to the people who've done this. So John Skudamoris and Nadja, who's now a postdoc in my lab, have been doing most of the work on develop they've been doing most of the work on developing the Cytoscape app that integrates with the backend. The backend is a combination of stuff written by me and the string database, which was developed in collaboration with the group of Christian von Mering in Zurich and Pierre Borg at the Yenbiel in Heidelberg. And Sune Frankel was one of the main people behind the whole text mining thing. Whoa, this thing is very loose. Stay. Okay, so if we jump into Cytoscape, here we go. If you have Cytoscape installed, it's open source software, you can just go install it. You can run off to the App Store and install the String app if you haven't done it. And once you've done that, you can go import network from public databases. Once you're in a public databases, you can choose a bunch of options. One of them, I want to get a string network from a PubMed query. You can then type in your topic of interest. Let's take something that everyone can relate to today. Jet lag, and it might be spelled in a couple of different ways. Let's pull the top 50 human proteins relate in terms ranked in terms of how often they're mentioned in PubMed abstracts talking about jet lag and then go to string and create a network of those. So it went to PubMed, it found 953 abstracts, it then went and did enrichment analysis for all 20,000 proteins in human to find the top proteins, went to the string database, fetched the network and there you have it. That's how long it takes and most of the time was spent waiting for network traffic. <clears throat> Literally doing the whole ranking of all genes in the server side takes less than a second for a query like this. So if you look at it, you'll see it makes a lot of sense. So if we zoom in and look a little bit at the clusters, you, if you know the biology of the topic, you will realize that of course this is a whole lot of proteins functionally related to each other and all of them involved in circadian rhythm. And uh, that's of course the core of the problem in terms of jet lag. So that's what I, all I wanted to say and show here. I'll be around all week, so if anybody's interested in working with these kinds of things, I'd be happy to show you how it works. Thanks.